Hello, we have previously looked at what happens when we have a constant growth rate according to this model right here, which is known as the Gordon growth or the constant growth model, right? We say is that our current price is equal to our dividend next period divided by our required return minus our growth rate, okay? So when we're doing this is that one of our assumptions here is that growth is constant over the life of this company. However, we know that's not exactly the case with all companies, right? We might have some companies that are like some tech companies, some brand new startups that have explosive growth right off the bat, right? We could say that this company with this explosive growth, right, has a required return of, um, say, a required return of 12%. And let's say we also have a growth rate for the first five years at 30%. Okay, we know this company is exploding in growth for the next couple years, right? It's growing at 30%. Now, what happens, right, is that if we put this in, right, the R minus G, the 12% minus the 30%, right, we end up with a negative number in our denominator, okay, if we are just using this Gordon growth model. So what that means is that that would give us a negative price, which we can't have. And it also doesn't make sense because we have a growth rate of 30%, right? This means the company, when we put it into uh, the Gordon growth model, that's what our ex expectations are forever into the future, right? This, there's no way a company can grow at 30% uh, every year for eternity, right? That's, that's just, that, that, that would make it larger than the world's GDP in not too long of a time. Um, so what we're doing here is we have to be able to set this up and break this into a couple pieces. Say it's going to grow at 5% or it's going to be 30% for five years. And then after that, our growth rate is going to fall to say 6%. Okay. So how do we actually put this into context? How do we actually do this? Okay. Well, the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to be in, end up combining a couple of uh, a couple of the models that we've used so far, right? We've also used this dividend discount model, right? Which is our dividend next year divided by one plus R plus our price next year divided by one plus R, okay? Now, one of the things that we, when we've been looking at this is that we've said, all right, we've just taken that P1 as being given. We've just extended it out there. Now, what we're gonna be doing with the uneven growth portion is that we are going to combine these two models, okay? So we're gonna take the Gordon growth model and then insert that into the dividend discount model. Now, this is not as complicated as you might think it will be, okay? So we're, we're gonna say here is that we're going to be using um, a company, we're just gonna say this in, in, a, in a simple context, we're gonna say 30% uh, for the next two years, okay? And we're going to um, say after that, it's going to be at 6%. And we have that required return. R is going to be 12%, okay? And then we're gonna say that D0, our dividend today is at $3. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna just insert this all in there and we're gonna figure out how we're actually going to do this, okay? So what we know is that, um, we know that our dividend today is $3, okay? So we're gonna have to figure out here what our dividend is next year and our dividend is the year after, right? Because as we're saying here, is that it's for the two years, okay? So D1, right, is going to be equal to D0 times one plus G, right, which D0 is three, and that's multiplied by our growth rate, which is growing for the next two years at 30%, right, so that's going to be one plus 0.3, which tells us that our current dividend is going to be in the amount, excuse me, our dividend in year one is going to be $3.90, okay? And so then the next thing we do is that we know that D2, the dividend in year two, is just growing at the rate from D1. So we're gonna take D1, and then we're gonna multiply that by one plus the growth rate, right? Because it's growing at that 30%. So D1 here, we just took from this value up here, is going to be the 3.9 multiplied by the 1.3, which tells us that our dividend in year two is $5.07, okay? So how are we actually going to combine these models in there, okay? So we have D1, we have D2, Okay, so we can use our basic part of the discount dividend model, right? D1 divided by one plus R plus uh, D2 divided by one plus R 
squared, right, because it's coming in two periods, plus, and then we're going to have divided by the 1 plus r squared here, we're going to have p2, right? But where exactly does p2 come from? Okay, So we're going to say here is that p2 right, is equal to right, just our basic Gordon growth model. Right, Remember, p0 is equal to d1 divided by r minus g. So p2 is going to be equal to d3 divided by r minus g. Okay, So what we see here is that this is still the Gordon growth model. Right? which you already know how to do. And then we have the discount dividend model, which you already know how to do. And we're taking these values here. We have basically, we have a lag of one period, right? So when we looked at the basic Gordon growth model, right, which is P0 equals D1 divided by R minus G, okay? What we had here is we had a difference in one time period. We had our D1 and we had P0, okay? So now we are back over here and we're looking at, we have D3, and P2, right? We're still at a lag of one period, okay? So that now that we have P2, right? We did the, the, the work here to figure out what P2 was. We can now insert that into the place of P2, right? Previously using the discount dividend model, we've taken that price in, in two years as a given. What we have now is we actually have the way to compute that and we can plug it in, okay? So if we're going to go through here and we're going to work this out, is um, we have we need to work this out as being um, we are going to look at our P zero here is going to be equal to D one, which we computed right here is three dollars and ninety cents, and that is divided by our discount rate by one point one two, plus we have D two, which is five dollars and seven cents divided by our discount rate squared, and then plus we have our P2 divided by 1.12 squared, okay? So what we're looking at now is that thereafter it's going to be a, uh, a rate of 6%. So we're going to work through right here um, what the value of P2 is, okay? So we're saying that P2 is equal to D3 divided by R minus G, okay? So D3 is going to be equal to uh, D2 times 1 plus G divided by R minus G, right? Because we have the same time periods here. So what we're looking at here is that we have D2 is that $5.07 multiplied by our growth rate. This is our new growth rate, right? Because we are growing, we're only growing at 30% for two years, right? So D1, D2. After that, we're growing at 6%. So this is going to be 1.06, and that's going to be divided by R minus G, which R is 0.12 minus 0.06. So we have a dividend amount of $5.37, okay? And we're going to then divide that by our 0.06. And so that tells us that we have a price, so P2 is going to be equal to $89.50, okay? All right, so we have 89.50 that gets inserted into that point right there, okay? So now we can just run this through, work some math out. All right, so we just did the, the computations for those individual components, okay? Now notice is that these dividend amounts are changing, so you can't use the, 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 uh, the annuity portion because they are, you have to actually compute these individually, okay? So we get that. And now we are showing here is that we have a price, P0, okay, is equal to $78.87. Okay. And that is the basic way that we do the uneven growth model. I'm going to do another example here next to, to hopefully concrete this a little bit.